Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC16 in Salt Lake City, and today we're at the Asa Tech booth with Steve Branton. Welcome to Salt Lake, sir. Thank you, Rich. Good to see you again. Well, well thanks for having us back. Uh, Steve, I think we should start at the beginning for folks who might not know. Uh, who is Asa Tech and who do you help? So Asa Tech is a manufacturer of data center liquid cools. We make cooling for individual servers and racks and all the way out to the whole data center. We deliver a number of values, energy efficiency, uh, water savings, and performance. Um, and we're very pleased at this show to be talking about new deployments that we're now in the top 500. So first, we uh, have a system at, at Oak Forest PAX in Japan that's number six on the top 500 list. So congratulations to my friends at Fujitsu. That was a big accomplishment. That's a, a K&L cluster. So, very new technology that we've liquid cooled. Um, we also have uh, four new top 500, top 200 uh, systems with Penguin at national labs, um, Sandia, Lawrence Livermore, and Los Alamos. So um, congratulations to Penguin on, on getting those, those placements. It's very exciting for us proves that we're a, a serious player in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, these are the fastest machines in the world being cooled by Asa Tech technology. Absolutely. Yeah, so. All right, so, so my next question, Steve, is about flexibility. How, how does Asa Tech deliver that for customers? Okay, well, let's walk over here. Okay. So, in the past, we've predominantly talked about our direct-to-chip rack CDU system, which is a data center level liquid cooling system gets all of the heat into liquid and takes that out of the data center in an all liquid path where it can be disposed of for free. Or it can actually be recycled uh, in a waste heat recovery kind of scenario. One of the things that we're seeing as Intel and uh, NVIDIA and others start to bring out higher power systems, there are a lot of all air-cooled data centers that want to take advantage of those processors. So we've uh, brought into the market something that we've been doing in the desktop arena for many years, uh, which is what we call a liquid-assisted air cooler. Um, and it has a small radiator here, and it cools the process here, a little pump, all integrated together, drops right in, replaces the air heat sink. And because the liquid is more efficient than air at moving the heat, we're able to, to put more heat into the air here uh, with a radiator than you can with a, a heat exchanger that's on top of the chip. So we have those two solutions. Um, saw an example last week where we could, by increasing the power of the chip, get about 20% more performance out of the node than you can with a straight air-cooled system. So uh, very excited to be looking at those things. And of course, very excited overall about how the increasing heat of processors will drive liquid cooling into the marketplace. Yeah, we're seeing all these new processors, like you say, KNL and the P100 from NVIDIA and others that are you know, very, very dense compute, you know, 300 watts sometimes, aren't they? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here is KNL. This is upcoming Skylake. Mm -hmm. um, over here we've got, uh, on the NVIDIA side, the, the SS, SX, or so the P100 SXM2, the traditional uh, K40 type processors and some of the earlier SXM1 type processors from NVIDIA. So the same technology that we use to cool all of these things in our pump is what makes, is one of the things that makes us so uh, affordable. Because we're able to leverage that technology across all these different platforms. Because okay. yeah, affordability is, is something that, you know, I haven't really got my arms around when it comes to liquid cooling. It would just seem to be naturally be more expensive to do this than the standard air, wouldn't it? Yes, well, it is a little more expensive than the standard air. Our original name for the pump was low-cost liquid cooling. So we've been driving to make liquid cooling affordable for many, many years. And that started, of course, in our desktop business. Um, and we've then taken that volume that we have in the desktop business. We build about 100,000 liquid coolers a month. That volume we're able to leverage into the uh, data center market. So that helps on the affordability side. And then a couple of other things we've done. Many of our direct-to-chip systems use dripless connectors. Now there's many fine dripless connectors on the marketplace. But if you're a dripless connector manufacturer, one of the things that you want to do is make one product that, that solves the needs of many customers. And to do that, you have to be able to work with a variety of fluids at a, a large range of pressures. 
our system is a low pressure system and we know exactly what fluid is going to go in there. So when we looked at the market, we said, hey, we can build a purpose-built connector that does exactly what we needed to do, will deliver the same kind of reliability that the off-the-shelf off products do at a much more affordable level. So that's what we've done. Um, in addition, we have our, we manufacture our pumps and use the same technology across all the pumps. So we're leveraging it and that makes us affordable. And then the last thing I'd like to talk about is reliability. So as we put pumps into the system, we use what we call a distributed pumping model. So there's typically two pumps in each node. And some people get concerned about because they think about fans. And fans and hard drives are two of the things that data center operators find that they need to replace frequently. And so that's a legitimate concern. With our pump though, there's a difference. When you build a fan, you put it together in the factory, you lube the bearings, and you send it out into the world to work for as long as it will work. With our system, what we've got is we want to make sure first there was no shaft bearing in the pump to leak. So we magnetically coupled the impeller to the stator, so there's no bearing to leak. And because we've done that, all of the revolving parts, the moving parts, are inside the liquid. The liquid has propylene glycol in it, primarily as an antifreeze at one level, but propylene glycol is a natural lubricant. So we've got a ceramic bearing running in there that's constantly being re-lubricated and liquid cooled. And that makes these pumps reliable. Just in the data center deployments that we've talked about over the past, that we've talked about over the past couple of years, we've got 160 million operating hours on our pumps with no failures. So if you translate that back, that's some people would call that 160 million hours of reliability or, or MTBF. And so um, it's a very reliable pump and a very reliable process. And we're very pleased that that's working out for our customers the way it is. That's great. So you're delivering value to customers with more energy efficiency and you're working to keep the, the cost down so they can get that OPEX and CAPEX and those things that they're after. Absolutely. Absolutely.